Joining us now is family law attorney Jacqueline Newman. So Jacqueline, I want to talk to you about some kind of reports that have come out throughout this whole quarantine process. The first one being the idea of maybe a baby boom coming up after this. I mean, a lot of people are saying that a lot of couples are stuck together, that they're going to uh, I'll let the viewers fill in the blank as to what happens when that happens. But do you think that there is some credence to this argument that maybe in nine months from now that we may see another type of boom of uh, pregnancies? Absolutely. I think that we're really in a situation where, as you said, people are going to be trapped together. And, you know, some people have, you know, certain type of recreational activities that may ultimately result in uh, nine months from now or 10 months from now, lots of babies. Yeah, I mean, you can only watch so much on Netflix, I guess. I mean, at this point, I think I've expired Netflix. I've got to the end of it. It's kind of like a video game. I've done the tutorial. I've gotten through the campaign. But uh, there's another type of report then that kind of may contradict that a little bit. They say that maybe uh, with more people kind of spending a lot of time together, a lot of people may kind of learn things about their significant others or maybe spend too much time that may kind of differ how they view them, which may lead to increased divorce rates. Do you think that is also something that has some kind of credence behind that argument? I absolutely do. I think that, you know, you have to think in most situations, people don't spend that much time together. I mean, when you're a married couple, especially if you have children and you have two parents that are working, I mean, you see each other maybe in the morning for a little bit, maybe at night. And on the weekends, you know, if you're raising children, I say you're in the business of raising children and one person's at soccer practice, one person's at ballet, everybody's all over the place. This is the most time most married couples have probably spent together since their honeymoon. And so I think we're really in a situation where if your marriage was, you know, if you were kind of on the edge before, I think this definitely might be something that pushes you over. And kind of building on that idea, too, is uh, a lot of people are kind of worried about the idea that maybe domestic abuse type of situations may increase as well. Uh, it's kind of a unfortunate reality, but uh, a lot of times those people in those very horrible situations can't necessarily leave them. A lot of times they're dependent on them. They don't have the maybe emotional support system to really kind of guide them through those hard times. And as a result, they don't divorce, as we were just saying. They kind of are trapped once again inside that household, which could lead to increased instances of that. Do you think that is something that we should look out for too? Absolutely. I, I'm very concerned about that. I think that beyond the fact that, yes, you're in a situation where people are working from home, you have children that are home that are running around. I mean, that can cause a lot of chaos. There's a lot of additional stress. You have college kids that are now home that don't want to be. And then not only that, but you have the stress of job insecurity. You have the stress of watching, you know, the stock market plummet. So all of your life savings. And, you know, if you wanted to release stress and maybe watch, you know, a football game or something like not football for this season, but <laughs> Any kind of sporting, sporting event, that's not there either. Yeah. So I am really, really concerned that the stress of it, I think people are going to be drinking a lot more. Um, and I'm very concerned about domestic violence. And there's nowhere to go. So it's just incredibly scary. And, you know, my advice to people is really just take a breath. Like that is my big, big piece of advice is people take a breath, recognize the situation we're in right now. It's a blip. We are where we are. We're going to get through it. But please keep emotions in check as much as possible. I think that's really good advice. And for our viewers, too, I would suggest just reach out to people, even if people who may seem like they're doing OK. Sometimes those are the people who are most vulnerable, the purple, people who do a very good job covering it up. It never hurts to reach out. It goes a long way, too. Even if there's nothing wrong, it could mean a lot for that individual. But I want to end on a little bit more of a high note. Uh, there's got to be some silver lining in all of this. Uh, kids are maybe back in the household, more parent time. Uh, maybe parents can kind of focus a little bit more on homeschooling, kind of tailor what those kids need a little bit. Is there a silver lining in any of this? This or am I just kind of going down a rabbit hole where there's nothing there? No, I think there is silver lining. I think that there are situations where people are really going to get to know their children in a way they haven't before. I mean, I'll speak for myself. My husband and I are both really busy. We are having dinner together with our family every single night. Um, it's been really, really nice. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think there's a lot of opportunity for creativity. And, you know, one other note is I heard that you know, everybody's fostering dogs and cats. And so I understand that the shelters are like, they don't have dogs and cats anymore because everybody wants to take one in. So that's a good news too. You know, anecdotally, that is something that I've actually seen a lot of. I didn't really think about that until recently. I thought it was kind of a coincidence, but I have seen a lot of people kind of adopting dogs and cats. And uh, I guess that is a little bit of a silver lining in all of this. I mean, something that people weren't doing beforehand. And maybe sometimes it takes a global health, health pandemic for people to get involved. But I can't thank you enough, Jacqueline Newman, for coming on and kind of just breaking down these events, humanizing this issue a little bit. I think it's very important to remember that it's people going through this circumstance right now, not just statistics on an economic chart. So Jacqueline, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you.